provides a few simple resources for handling system level error conditions. Let's make a working copy of errorno.c and we'll paste this into our working project and open it up here. So you see this is a very simple little file. It includes a header called errorno, E-R-R-N-O dot H. And if you're in C++, that would be C-E-R-R-N-O without the dot H. This provides access to an external integer called errorno. If errorno is not zero, it'll contain a value representing an error. The supported values and their meanings are typically defined by the host operating system and will be different on different operating systems. So let's just compile this and run it. We're going to try and erase a file that doesn't exist, and that will raise an error. And so we'll go ahead and we'll compile this and run it. And we see our standard error, of course, comes up at the top sometimes. It may or may not come up at the top on yours, but because everything else is buffered, it probably will. The error note starts out as being zero here on line six, and then we try to erase the file. And there's the remove on line eight for erasing the file. And then we print out the error note again, and we see that it's a number two. And then we use this function p error, and that's on line 10. And we say, couldn't erase file. And you'll notice what happens. It prints us out to standard error, and it's followed by a colon and a space and the error message itself. No such file or directory. So this makes it really easy to get an interpretation of error no. So again, what that's doing, that p error, is it takes a string and it prints that out, and it follows it with a string interpretation of whatever the error number is that got set in error no. So there's a whole other way that you can do this. And instead of this p error, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to use another function called stir error. And in fact, we need to include the string.h header file for this. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to put in a little printf. That percent %s will get replaced with a C string, and I get the C string by calling stir error, S-T-R-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R -R, and I pass it the error number from error no. And why don't I just be nice and put in a new line here? So we'll compile this and run it. And so now we have exactly the same thing, except our printf is printing to standard out, so it's not in red and it's not at the top. And it says the error message is no such file or directory. So we're actually getting a string from stir error, and that string has the error message in it. So the stir error will take that error no, and it'll look up whatever the error number is, and it'll find the string, and it'll give me back that string as its return. So let's take a quick look at the function signatures for the functions that we've used in this lesson. So p error doesn't return anything. That's what it means when it says void there. And it takes a string, and it'll print out that string to the standard error, followed by the error string that it translates from whatever is currently in error no. This is the easiest way to print out an error from your error no. And stir error, which is defined in the string.h header file, stir error will take whatever you pass it, which in this case we just passed it error no. You'll usually do that, or you'll save your error no's up and you'll use them later and it returns a pointer to a string, and that string represents the error string as translated from the error no exactly the same as you would get with p error. The error no system is part of standard C and C++. The error no value is set whenever there's a system error. It's simple, it's effective, and it's used a lot in both C and C++. Now let's go ahead and delete our working file and run clean to get